system plus legal education plus lawyer plus entertainment plus invincible, when he was a lawyer, he once maintained the legendary myth of a thousand undefeated cases and was hailed as the most skilled wizard and eloquent lawyer among lawyers. His unique debate style often makes opponents unpredictable and unable to resist. Ordinary lawyer. Defends around the client with little success and often loses the case. Lawyer Chen Cheng. From the analysis of the entire case, as long as everyone goes in, won't my client win this lawsuit? Audience Panel. Back then, I only glanced at Lawyer Jiang from a distance and was sentenced to three years. Prosecutor. What? Do you still want me to be the defendant? Judge. How to judge? Lawyer Jiang, please don't send judges in anymore. It's not easy for us to cultivate a judge. Witness. What are you looking at me for? No, can I become a suspect as a witness? Jiang Sheng. I'm sorry, I have wronged everyone for the benefit of my client. He is proficient in civil, criminal, and administrative matters. What do you mean by Chen Sheng lawyer? I can handle cases that you dare to handle, and I dare to handle cases that you dare not. As for why? Just because of the law. System added, legally authorized. Professor Jiang, in the face of achieving a thousand victories, do you have anything in your heart that you want to say to everyone? Faced with an interview with CCTV reporters, Jiang Sheng, who had already gained fame all over the world, smiled calmly. I feel very uneasy inside. This is not only an honor but also a kind of motivation. These 1,000 cases can be considered as witnesses to my first half of life, and in the latter half, I will continue to make my own efforts for the construction of the rule of law. Chapter 1 Never Like a Youth Tour, Reborn with the System You are listening at NovelFull.audio Note All cases in this article are fictional, and any similarity is purely a similarity. In early summer of June in China in Classroom 401 of the Teaching Building of the School of Political Science and Law at Xiangda Campus, the young teacher who was giving a lecture stopped and wiped the sweat on his forehead. There is no air conditioning in the classroom, only the ceiling of the classroom is still working hard with the electric fans from the last century. Listening to the creaking sound of the electric fan working, Many students who are taking notes seriously are worried that the overaged electric fan above their heads may fall and injure themselves at any time. As a teacher, Jiang Sheng listened to the noise made by the summer cicadas on the green trees outside the teaching building, walked back to the desk, and picked up the water cup placed on the podium to drink. Watching the classmates constantly sweating under the podium, Jiang Sheng smiled and closed his textbook. Stop talking, stop talking it's too hot today. Upon hearing Jiang Sheng's words, many students felt relieved and put down their pens, lying on the table. The first class in the afternoon is really tiring. Watching his classmates rubbing their eyes and feeling drowsy, Jiang Sheng smiled and spoke. This is our last class on general theory of criminal law. It's also my first time as a teacher and everyone is also my first time as a student. I hope that student's final evaluation will not fail the teacher, otherwise the academic affairs office will have to talk to the teacher. Listening to Jiang Sheng's words, the classmates laughed one after another. One of them asked, Teacher Jiang, is the exam difficult this year? Jiang sat down, nodded slightly, and replied. This year's test paper was given by my teacher, and it's all about what I've talked about. As long as you review it carefully, you can definitely pass. Isn't there a joke online now that women are not good at science? It's strange that textbooks are all made up by men. Our female classmates must pass this final exam, what if I fail? Will there be any punishment? What about the boy? Teacher Jiang, what if the boy fails? Listening to his classmates jokingly asking questions, Jiang Sheng pondered for a moment and waved his hand to signal his classmates to calm down. I failed. Jiang Sheng deliberately lowered his voice, pretending to be mysterious. The failing teacher can only see everyone again next year, 
and the teacher will be very happy. In addition to joking, Jiang Sheng also emphasized in a foreign language. See you tomorrow. Ah, teacher, don't do it. Teacher Jiang, please help me out. Jiang lowered his head and glanced at his watch. After ten minutes of class, he looked at the students below. There are still ten minutes left, and the teacher will give you a question on site to test everyone. Let's see how everyone is learning. If everyone answers well, how about revealing some question types to everyone? Upon hearing Jiang Xing's words, all the classmates who were originally lying on the table perked up. There are many basic principles in our criminal law. Can any student share them with us? Jiang Sheng picked up his water glass and listened to his classmates discussing quietly. The crime and punishment are legal, I learned it in the first class. It's also appropriate to match criminal responsibility and punishment. Have you discussed it with your classmates? If it's done, you can just stand up and say it. Jiang Xing's gaze, sitting on the podium, and many of his classmates turned to the students sitting in front of him. Teacher, the principle of combining guilt with punishment is appropriate. Xian Jun, as the class monitor, stood up and replied. Jiang nodded and explained the basic meaning of this principle to his classmates. That's right. The principle of matching crime, responsibility, and punishment is a coordinated principle between crime and punishment. Without the principle of matching crime, responsibility, and punishment, there may be situations where minor crimes are punished severely, or serious crimes are punished lightly. Both undoubtedly violate our simple concept of fairness and justice. After Jiang Xing finished his introduction, he did not immediately ask the class monitor to sit down, but continued to ask. So, in which work is the principle of proportionality between crime, responsibility, and punishment reflected in the classical school of criminal law? Do you know? Listening to the teacher's question, Xian Li lowered his head in thought for a moment, then uncertain, he said. Uh, it should be the Italian legal expert Beccarius on crime and punishment. Dot. Well, not bad. Jiang Sheng waved his hand and asked Xian Li to sit down. Beccaria is a famous Italian jurist, most famous for his thin booklet, On Crime and Punishment. Dot. Jiang Sheng compared the thickness with his right hand, which was even thinner than the width of his little thumb. But it was precisely this thin booklet that established his position as the founder of the criminal classical school. Many of his viewpoints in the book are worth learning from even in the 21st century. The tiered punishment viewpoint proposed by Beccaria in the book is actually the prototype of the principle of proportionality between crime, responsibility, and punishment. In addition to the concept of statute of limitations we are currently proposing, Beccaria believes that different statute of limitations need to be set for different crimes. Faced with a large number of minor offenses, such as theft, defamation, etc., Setting a too long statute of limitations for prosecution is obviously detrimental to social stability and does not conform to the modesty of criminal law, when facing a relatively small number of serious crimes, such as murder, subversion of political power, etc. It is necessary to set a longer statute of limitations for prosecution, which facilitates judicial authorities to investigate, collect evidence and prosecute. Why do we do this? Shouldn't all crimes be brought to justice? Isn't it better if there is no statute of limitations for prosecution? Jiang Sheng looked at his classmates and continued, It's difficult, classmates. In our ideals, we hope that all crimes can be punished. But what about reality? Our judicial power is scarce, and in the face of numerous crimes, it is obvious that we can only make choices. The law is progressing in the process of constantly making choices for interests. If the statute of limitations for minor offenses is set at 20 years, is it appropriate for Zhang San to steal a TV without being discovered 20 years ago, and then the judicial authorities to prosecute Zhang San 20 years later? Zhang San has already started a family and a happy family. Due to his criminal behavior 20 years ago and only stealing a TV, should we sentence Zhang San? It's not necessary, is it? 
Jiang Xing pushed his glasses on the bridge of his nose while listening to his explanation. The students who were listening attentively nodded thoughtfully. The same goes for serious crimes, such as murder. Is the statute of twenty years long? Is it long? I even think it's a bit short. In the Analects, there is a dialogue where a disciple of Confucius asked him, can we still avenge the enmity of nine generations? Confucius replied, can we avenge the enmity of ten generations? Jiang Xing glanced at his watch, there was no time left, so he had to stop, still unsatisfied. In the book, Beccaria also discussed a lot, such as the characterization of theft. Beccaria said it was a pitiful crime, why did he say that? The issue of social transformation and acceptance of criminals is worth reflecting on. He also systematically proposed the idea of abolishing the death penalty for the first time. Students can take a look at Beccaria's discussion on the issue of the abolition of the death penalty after class. As soon as Jiang Xing finished speaking, the bell for the end of class rang. Okay, students, let's finish class. I hope you review carefully and achieve good grades. Goodbye, Teacher Jiang. Well, goodbye. Teacher, goodbye. Okay, goodbye. Jiang Sheng, who was sitting on the podium, bid farewell to his classmates by packing their backpacks. Ding, excelling daily tasks. A focused law teaching classroom, number of classroom students. 52 number of attentive listeners. 47, 90%. Task reward. 1. Basic reward of 200 experience points. 2. Excessive rewards will be randomly drawn once. Listening to the sound of the system in his ear, Jiang Xing smiled with relief. Rewards and other things were secondary, but what was important was that the children listened attentively, and it was not in vain for him to prepare so late every day. After Jiang Xing put the book into his briefcase, he walked out of the teaching building and rushed to the law firm, where there was still a client waiting for him. Sitting in the car, Jiang Sheng looked at the nearby red light and couldn't help but imagine the scene before his death in his mind. At that time, Jiang Sheng was planning to return to the law firm after finishing a court session. Walking on the street, he was directly taken to an American-style apartment by a former client on the street, and was reborn into a parallel world with the so-called legal elite system. From the age of 28 to 24, with a system, Jiang Xing thinks it's pretty good, although that shot did hurt a bit. The green light was on, and Jiang Xing stepped on the gas pedal with his right foot and drove directly past the street intersection. Legal elite system reminds you. Watching here is the beginning of a new story. Are you ready to follow Jiang Xing's footsteps and explore the ocean of law? Please don't hesitate to urge for updates and bookshelves, let's embark on a journey towards the ocean of law together. Chapter 2 Samsung Case I answered. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Downstairs from Yajing Law Firm, Jiang Sheng, who had closed the car door, quickly went upstairs with a briefcase in his right hand, making money. At the reception desk, Jiang Sheng asked the receptionist's assistant. Xiao Li, have the parties come yet? It's been a while, lawyer Jiang, replied the receptionist. Well, let the parties come directly to my office. Okay, lawyer Jiang, I'll go let them go right away. Jiang Sheng walked into his office and had just put down his briefcase when two elderly people walked in. Two elders, please take a seat. Jiang pressed the power button on the computer and stood up to pour tea for the families of the two parties involved. After the second old man sat down on the sofa, Jiang Sheng took a pen and looked at the second old man, asking. What case did the two elders come over today to inquire about? Criminal or civil? The old man and the old lady sitting on the sofa exchanged a glance before the old man spoke up. Today we came here for our son's lawsuit, it's a criminal case. Can you please elaborate on your son's basic situation and the circumstances of the case? Jiang Sheng lowered his head while writing basic information on the criminal reception record on the table and asked. My son's name is Zhu Guang, 
and he has been arrested by the police for five years on suspicion of intentional homicide. Five years. Jiang Xing emphasized on the reception record that the longest legal detention period has been exceeded. The reason for the incident was in 2017, when my son Zhu Guangha. After listening to the master's argument, Jiang Xing nodded to indicate that he knew the general reason for the case. Originally, in 2017, Zhu Guang suspected that his wife Wu Chui had an affair with Zhao Chen, who was doing small business in the same county. He gathered four people to invite Zhao Chen out in August 2018 and killed him in an abandoned factory area, throwing his body into a well. But it was not until September 2018 that a villager discovered the body inside the well while fetching water and immediately reported it to the police. In September of the same year, the police locked down a group of five people led by Zhu Guang, suspecting him of having committed a major crime, and carried out an arrest. Does Mr. Er hope to reduce your son's sentence or not be guilty? Since Jiang Sheng has not yet seen the files and met with the parties involved, it is difficult for him to hastily draw a conclusion on the defense strategy of this case. The second old man muttered softly for a while, then threw the problem at Jiang Sheng. Lawyer Jiang, how do you think we should defend ourselves? Er Lao, why don't we do this? If you really believe in our Yajing law firm, you can sign an agreement with us first. After reviewing the files and meeting with your son, I may decide whether to plead not guilty or the lightest defense. After Jiang Xing finished speaking and saw the two elders, he still had some doubts and added that. Of course, this case has been delayed from 2017 until this year for prosecution. I think there may also be doubts on the prosecution side, so from my personal perspective, I can defend towards innocence and strive for innocence. The hesitant expression of the two elders disappeared. Can they fight for their son's innocence? Lawyer Jiang, let's sign the agreement. Jiang Xing nodded, as a lawyer, you always have to eat, don't you? Use some tricks to make the person believe in themselves and shout for an assistant to come in. Xiao Li, take the second elder to sign the commission agreement and commission contract. This is my phone number. If you need anything, you can always call me to communicate. Sometimes I may not be able to answer during class, but I will give it to you as soon as possible afterwards. Jiang Sheng stood up and took Zhu Guang's parents to handle the relevant procedures. Er Lao, take your time. After seeing off Zhu Guang's parents, Jiang Sheng also received a system prompt. Ding, accept the commission of Zhu Guang's parents, cause of case. Zhu Guang murder case case difficulty. Key defense strategy. Unlock after checking and reviewing the file. The Samsung case, then there should be plenty of rewards. Jiang Xing greeted his assistant and returned to his office. I first submitted my application for the meeting online, went to review the paper this afternoon, and will meet with Zhu Guang tomorrow. With a pen in his right hand, Jiang Sheng is tapping on the table. He doesn't have any information yet, but based on what he knows so far, he has been detained for five years and has not yet entered public prosecution. It's just that the prosecution believes there is controversy or insufficient evidence within the case. Interestingly, Jiang Sheng touched his chin with his right hand and opened his character template to check. Name Jiang Sheng, age 24 years old, education. Graduate degree, PhD, LV. 3, 200 300, position. 1, lecturer at the law department of Xiangdai University 2. Part-time lawyer at Yajing Law Firm current task. 1, creation of first dot class courses in criminal law at the school level 2. 10 consecutive wins in lawsuits, 1 tenth, special. 1. A lottery opportunity. This is the basic panel now, and there are other skill panels that Jiang Sheng has also roughly browsed through. Let's start the lottery. Ding, please choose the lottery direction, Jiang Sheng looked at, skills, money, and so on and chose the direction of, assistance. Although there is a reception assistant in the office, the assistant is just an assistant and cannot handle some things without a certificate. 
Tomorrow, an excellent intern will report to the law firm intern. Jiang Xing scratched his forehead, which seemed a bit different from what he had thought. Interns are just interns, at least they have a certificate. Jiang Sheng looked at the time, went downstairs and casually settled for lunch. After taking a break at the law firm, he rushed directly to the People's Procuratorate of Xiang City to apply for paper review. What? The case file of Zhu Guang is not with you. Listening to the staff's answer, Jiang Sheng was somewhat surprised. Cases like murder that can be sentenced to life imprisonment or above according to law are tried by intermediate people's courts and prosecuted by the same level procuratorates. How could they not be with you? Is Zhu Guang's file not with your Xiangxia procuratorate? Where is Zhu Guang's file? Jiang Sheng asked about the whereabouts of the file. Please wait a moment. Zhu Guang's file is at the People's Procuratorate of Xiangqing District. Xiangqing District Procuratorate. Jiang Xing repeated, asking again, is there no mistake? How could this case be tried by the grassroots court? This case was indeed handed over to the Xiangqing District Prosecutor's Office for prosecution. You can inquire about the specific situation with the relevant prosecutor's office. Listening to the other party's explanation, Jiang Sheng could only nod and put the procedures he had taken out into his briefcase. I drove to the People's Procuratorate of Xiangqing District again, occasionally tapping the steering wheel with my right hand to ponder over the jurisdiction of this case. Putting it at the grassroots level for trial is obviously because the Xiang City Procuratorate and Intermediate Court do not want to expand the impact of this case, or rather they are not confident. With this in mind, Jiang Sheng carried his briefcase and walked into the Xiangqing District Prosecutor's Office. May I ask if Zhu Guang's file is with us? Please tell me the ID number. After Jiang Sheng reported a string of numbers, the staff quickly inputted them with their fingers. Is it related to a murder case? Well, yes, yes. Could you please show me the authorization procedures and identification documents? Jiang Sheng immediately presented a copy of his lawyer's certificate, as well as relevant authorization procedures from Zhu Guang's parents and a letter of appointment from the law firm. Please wait a moment, copying may take about half an hour. Jiang Sheng nodded and sat down in a corner of the hall. Half an hour later, Jiang Sheng stood up and went to pick up the copied file. Thank you. You are welcome. Carrying two large bags of file materials, Jiang Sheng walked out of the lobby of the prosecutor's office and quickly returned to his car. Just a few steps away, I was already sweating profusely. Reverse, go back to the law firm, and prepare for paper review. Let's see what kind of case this is, which can delay the prosecution for five years until now. Chapter 3 A new intern comes to the law firm. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Jiang Sheng, sitting at the law firm wiping sweat from his neck, placed the file on the table. First, I poured myself a glass of cold water, took a sip, and then picked up the first volume and flipped it over, occasionally marking it with a pen. Jiang Sheng, in a state of complete concentration, except for answering a few phone calls midway, did not notice that it was already dusk outside the window. Outside the office, many lawyers from the same firm have packed up their documents and finished work. It was only when the receptionist reminded Jiang Sheng that he realized it. Lawyer Jiang, the lights in the office are up to you. Okay, hurry back and be careful on the way. Jiang Sheng glanced at his phone and realized it was already 7.30 p.m. As I watched the assistant leave, I poked my cheek with a pen cap and picked up a cup that had already cooled down. It was probably a cup that had already been warmed up, and I drank the remaining one dot third of the warm water in one gulp. Although there are still two books left in the file that Jiang Sheng has not finished reading, he still knows why the case of Zhu Guang has been unresolved and has been dragging on until now. This case was first returned to the district prosecutor's office by the city prosecutor's office twice for investigation, and then was returned to the district prosecutor's office by the city prosecutor's office. Subsequently, the district prosecutor's office conducted two more returns for investigation, one coming and two going, 
which caused a delay of one or two years. Jiang Xing also finds it difficult to make excessive comments on this matter. Looking at the two remaining files, Jiang Xing doesn't plan to read them again today. He will continue reading after meeting with Zhu Guang tomorrow. Now that he has a more detailed understanding of the main cases, there is no need to rush. After sorting out the written records and photocopies and other procedures, Jiang Sheng stood up and stretched lazily. He was four years younger and had a good health. There are no classes at school, all you need to do is send the exam papers to the school. Pada, after turning off the last headlight of the law firm, Jiang Sheng took the law firm's door with him. Jiang Sheng, who returned home, put away his bag and didn't rush to finish his meal. He changed into sportswear and jogged for half an hour in the park around the community. Jiang Sheng, who walked out of the bathroom, still had a few strands of semi-wet hair on his forehead and sat at the table eating dinner. Ordered takeout, one meat and one vegetable, browsing through recent legal hot topics while eating. A young woman stood in front of Jiang Sheng at Yajing Law Firm. Hello, my name is Su Su and I graduated from Zhongnan University of Economics and Law. Last month, I submitted my internship resume to your esteemed institution. Jiang Sheng looked up at Su Su in front of him. Su Su. How is this name inexplicably familiar? Looking at Su Su, who was slightly nervous standing in front of him. Following the principle of producing high dot quality products through the system, Jiang Sheng doesn't want to waste any more time. Standing up, he directly extended his right hand and said, Welcome to join our Yajing family. Director Liang is currently on a business trip in the capital. I will introduce him to you when he returns. Su Su quickly reached out and shook hands with Jiang Sheng. Hey, is this successful? Do you not ask anyone who has passed the GPA or not? Let's go, let me introduce you to everyone and get to know you. Sometimes I'm busy, but you can ask other lawyers in the office for advice. Jiang Sheng walked out of the office with Su Su and introduced him one by one. This is the person in charge of our Yajing's intellectual property direction, Wu Zheng, Lawyer Wu. This is Xiao Li, who is responsible for reception. All we can do to ensure normal operation is thanks to Xiao Li. Su Su memorized the names and corresponding faces one by one. There is also the issue of related subsidies. During your internship, you didn't receive any salary, did you know? Well, I know. Su Su nodded, now that she had made up her mind to become a lawyer, she also had a certain understanding of the several stages of the legal profession. But, I will give you a basic subsidy of 3,000 yuan and a reward every month. The reward will be based on your performance every month. Can you accept it? Jiang Xing interned at his senior brother's institution back then, and these were all the subsidy standards that his senior brother gave Jiang Xing back then. Jiang LV, isn't there too much? Su Su remembered the complaints of her roommate who had entered the internship earlier than herself. Master gives a monthly subsidy of 2,000 yuan, it's really not enough to live. Is it still the standard for my roommate in the capital, to get 3,000 yuan in Xiangxia? If there's more, save it up. Just find an empty table outside and go find Xiao Li to collect office supplies. In the morning, familiarize yourself with the environment first, and in the afternoon, I will arrange specific tasks for you. Okay, Jiang LV, then I'll go out first. Jiang Xing lowered his head and flipped through Zhu Guang's file, finally determining the question he wanted to ask this afternoon. Su Su, who walked out of Jiang Sheng's office, went to the warehouse with the receptionist to pick up office supplies. As she went to the warehouse upstairs, Su Su couldn't help but curiously ask Xiao Li about her own doubts. Lawyer Jiang looks so young, why does he have an office? Because Lawyer Jiang is the high.end talent we are recruiting. I graduated with a PhD at the age of only 24, and I heard that I also went to study at Tohoku University in Japan, 24 years old. I'm much younger than I look, and at first I couldn't believe it. The assistant looked around and couldn't help but share a piece of gossip with Su Su. 
And I also heard that lawyer Zhang's teacher once served as the vice president of the Supreme Court of Justice. It's really fake. I just heard about it, the assistant placed the things on the empty table selected by Su Su. Just tell me what else is missing, I'll go back to my job first. Well, thank you. Su Su sat down to tidy up her future office space. From time to time, I turned my head to look at Jiang Sheng, who was lowering his head without pulling the curtain. It seems that I came to the right place this time. Little Yajing is actually hiding a tiger and a dragon. Su Su, who has packed everything up, has nothing to do for now. I had to bow my head and water my dormitory group. Crispy pastry, Su Su. Today I arrived at my internship unit, and my master in charge of taking care of me is only 24 years old, so young. Bai Lu, Su Lu. 24 years old. Is it really fake? Are you handsome? What's wrong with me? I'm a 50-year-old rascal. Crispy pastry. Image, looks like this. Bai Lu. Is this a lawyer? Why not become a male model? Blessed are you, little pastry. As noon approached, Jiang Xing finally stood up from his chair and picked up a thick stack of materials to put into his briefcase. Xiao Su, come out with me this afternoon. Okay, Jiang LV. Su Su, who had finished the water group, quickly stood up and followed behind Jiang Sheng. Su Su, who was sitting in the passenger seat, took the materials handed over by Jiang Sheng and looked at them. Familiarize yourself with this case first, and then consider it as learning experience. Su Su naturally looked at Zhu Guang's case. Key defense points of this case. Program. 1. Trial issues by grassroots people's courts. 2. Evidence collection issues. Entity. 1. Murder weapon 2. Specific time of death of the deceased 3. Co-case population supply after reading the file, the defense focus provided by the system is basically consistent with what Jiang Xing confirmed. Just need to verify with Zhu Guang again. Chapter 4 First Instance Trial of Zhu Guang's Intentional Homicide Case You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Zhu Guang, if a lawyer is looking for you, come out. In a certain room of the Xiangxia Detention Center, Zhu Guang, who had lived here for about five years, lay in bed listening to the words of the guards. After staying in the detention center for a long time and becoming expressionless, Zhu Guang's heart moved when he heard the words, Lawyer. Lawyer. Did your parents find a lawyer? The expression on Zhu Guang's face suddenly became more rich, without the original rigidity. I see the guards with such expressions changing several times a day, but they silently close the door and lead Zhu Guang to the meeting room. At this moment, Jiang Sheng and Su Su were already sitting in the meeting room, waiting for Zhu Guang's arrival. Jiang Sheng held paper, pen, and materials while asking Su Su, tell me your opinion on this case. Hmm. Su Su knew that lawyer Jiang was testing herself and pondered for a moment. From the information you just gave me, Jiang LV, it appears that Zhu Guang and others do have significant suspicions. However, based on several supplementary investigations by the public security organs, there is no direct evidence to prove that the culprit is Zhu Guang. When Su Su wanted to continue speaking, the guard escorted Zhu Guang in. After Zhu Guang sat down, the guards walked straight out and waited outside the door, ensuring the lawyer's right to meet while also avoiding unexpected events. Hello Zhu Guang, according to your parents' commission and the law firm's appointment, Jiang Sheng will serve as your first instance defense counsel. Zhu Guang nodded and his gaze involuntarily drifted toward Su Su, who was sitting beside him. Even a mouse was male, and he finally saw a female. Please answer me truthfully regarding some of the doubts in this case. Did you hear me clearly? Don't worry, we won't reveal the unfavorable facts. Zhu Guang nodded again. Did you buy a knife about 20 centimeters long and 2 centimeters wide at Mr. Wang's department store on August 17, 2017? 
Upon hearing Jiang Sheng mention the cutting tools, Zhu Guang's heart trembled and his face was uncertain, as if he was considering whether to tell the truth. Looking at Zhu Guang's expression, Jiang Xing didn't rush to hold a pen and slowly wait. I seem to have bought a knife there, but I can't remember the exact shape. Okay, on August 27, 2017, Zhao Chen received a phone number called 126 x times x times 9989. Is this phone number yours? Zhu Guang swallowed his saliva and felt his throat dry. Yes, it's mine, he said, on August 28, 2017, were you active around the abandoned factory area of Xiangqing Petrochemical Company, Limited? No, I haven't been around that area. Lawyer Jiang, you have to trust me. I've never been there before. Zhu Guang immediately denied it, almost making a poisonous oath to convince Jiang Sheng. Jiang Sheng picked up the materials on the side and asked a few more questions about Zhu Guang's accomplice. What is your relationship with Wu Fan? How did you get to know each other? We all know each other through working together, Buddy JB. Upon hearing the words, brother, Jiang Sheng's lips curled up, and Zhu Guang said that his brother had already confessed all the facts of the crime to the prosecution. On August 28, none of you four were at home. Where did you go? I didn't go anywhere, so I just casually played in the city. Jiang nodded and wrote Zhu Guang's words on the meeting transcript. After finishing the last word, play, Jiang Sheng collected the materials and asked Zhu Guang if there was anything else he wanted to ask. Lawyer Jiang, all of my roommates can be released on bail pending trial, can I? Do you also want to be released on bail pending trial? Yes, yes, I also want to. Unfortunately, I can't. In Zhu Guang's hopeful gaze, Jiang Sheng directly shattered his hope. Zhu Guang, you are suspected of intentional homicide, and the sentence is not for detention or control. But the person I am roommate with committed theft, how could he be released on bail pending trial? Do you think you are eligible for a sentence of imprisonment that may result in being released on bail without causing any social harm? That's all for today. Before the court hearing, I will explain some of the matters to you. Jiang Xing didn't say anything more. He walked out of the meeting room with his bag and Su Su Su, thanking the guard standing at the door. The two of them walked out of the detention center together. How do you feel? Zhu Guang didn't tell the truth, Su Su said of her own feelings. Jiang Sheng remained noncommittal and did not care whether it was Zhu Guang who killed him. As Zhu Guang's defender, all he had to do was prove that Zhu Guang had not killed him, although this fact may be false. Do you think Xiao Chen was killed by Zhu Guang? Based on current evidence and Wu Fan's confession, 90% of it was killed by Zhu Guang. Will you still defend Zhu Guang? Su Su immediately planned to say that of course, as a lawyer, I will definitely defend Zhu Guang. Don't rush to answer me first, think for yourself, would you really defend a murderer? Jiang Xing took out the car key, unlocked it, and let Su Su get in the car. Do I really know? Thinking about Jiang Xing's question, Su Su placed her right wrist on her forehead, and her previously clear answer seemed to have become somewhat vague. Looking at Xiao Su's appearance, Jiang Sheng covered his mouth and smiled. On the second day after meeting with Zhu Guang, Jiang Sheng conducted a series of on-dot site inspections of the crime scene and other places. During this time, Jiang Sheng also met with Prosecutor Hu Zhuang, who was in charge of Zhu Guang's case at the Xiangqing District Prosecutor's Office. With a subpoena issued by the Xiangqing District Court, the case of Zhu Guang, Wu Dan, Zhao Ji, and Lin Lu suspected of intentional homicide has been scheduled for trial at the end of May. Lawyer Jiang, our child is up to you. In the waiting room of the court, Zhu Guang's parents are still begging Jiang Sheng. Please rest assured, both of you. I will do my best. There were lawyers and family members of the other three defendants in the waiting room, which was a bit noisy for a while. The clerk was reading out the court discipline in the courtroom. It was still a while before Jiang Xing entered. 
Jiang Xing carefully checked his materials to ensure that there were no omissions. Please enter the court to maintain order, the on-duty police. In the courtroom, two law enforcement officers stood behind the side of the trial bench. The clerk continued to read, please have the prosecutor, defense counsel, and other litigants sit in court. Witnesses and experts are waiting outside the court for questioning. When they arrived, everyone in the waiting room stood up and walked into the court. Jiang Sheng placed the water cup in his hand on the table in his own position and stood waiting. Please stand up and invite the presiding judge, judges, and people's jurors to appear in court. The three members of the collegiate bench responsible for hearing this case walked in and sat down on the trial seat. After presiding judge Li Hao sat down, he immediately spoke up and asked everyone to sit down. Please sit down. Jiang Sheng and others just sat down. The clerk rotated his body 45 degrees and spoke. Report to the presiding judge, the pre-trial preparations have been completed and the trial can begin. Li Hao picked up the hammer on his right side and struck it lightly. Now the court is in session, bringing the defendants in this case, Zhu Guang, Wu Fan, Zhao Ji, and Lin Lu, to court. Chapter 5 Withdrawal of Confessions in Court, Part 1 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. After Zhu Guang and four others stood in the defendant's seat, presiding Judge Li Hao verified the identities of Zhu Guang, Wu Fan, Zhao Ji, and Lin Lu in accordance with Article 125 of the Interpretation of the Supreme People's Court on several issues concerning the enforcement of the criminal procedure law. Have you ever been criminally punished, Defendant Zhu Guang? Yes, in 2013, I was sentenced to seven months imprisonment by the People's Court of Nanjiang County for theft. In 2015, I was sentenced to one year and two months imprisonment by the People's Court of Xiangxin High Tech Zone for theft. Zhu Guang confessed in court the criminal punishment he had suffered before. Wu Fan and others are all first-time offenders. After listening to Chen Lu finish speaking, Li Hao continued, according to Article 19, 24, and 183 of the Criminal Procedure Law, the Xiangqing District People's Court is now publicly hearing the case of Zhu Guang, Wu Fan, Zhao Ji, and Lin Lu accused by the Xiangqing District People's Procuratorate of intentional homicide in accordance with the law. Now let me introduce the names and identities of the personnel present in court. In this case, Li Hao, who is myself, will serve as the presiding judge, Dong Hao and Su Wei will serve as judges, and Zhang Mu will serve as the clerk. The People's Procuratorate of Xiangqing District has appointed prosecutor Hu Zhuang to appear in court to support the prosecution Li Hao once again explained to the court the names and legal firms of the four defenders. According to the relevant provisions of the criminal procedure law, parties, and their legal representatives, defenders, and litigation agents have the following rights during the court proceedings. For defendants, have you heard the above rights clearly? Listen clearly. I understand. Got it. Clear. Four different voices answer together. Have you applied for recusal? Do not apply. X4, there was no objection at all, and even if the trial ended here, the presiding judge Li Hao immediately announced the move to the next procedure. Jiang Sheng, who was sitting in the defense seat, only sat in his seat, occasionally flipping through the materials in his hand. The court investigation will now begin, with the prosecutor reading out the indictment first. Okay, thank you, the presiding judge. Prosecutor Hu Zhuang looked down at the indictment in his hand and read it. Dear Chief Judge and Judge. Defendant 1, Zhu Guang, male, ethnic Han. Defendant 2, Wu Fan, male, ethnic Han. The investigation of this case was concluded by the Xiangqing District Public Security Bureau, and the four defendants were transferred to this court for examination and prosecution on suspicion of intentional homicide. After accepting the case, the court informed the parties on the second day that they had the right to appoint defense counsel, interrogated the defendant in accordance with the law, listened to the opinions of the victim's family in defense counsel, and reviewed all the materials of the case. Transferred from the People's Court of Xiangqing District to this court for review and prosecution. 
After legal examination, it was found that in August 2017, the defendant Zhu Guang suspected that his wife Wu Chui had an affair with the victim Zhao Qin in this case, and immediately felt a sense of revenge. On August 17, 2017, I purchased a controlled cutting tool approximately 17 cm long and 2 cm wide at Mr. Wang's department store. On August 27, 2017, the defendant, Zhu Guang, made a phone call to the victim Zhao Qin of this case through the phone number 136 x times x times 9989, and arranged for him to meet at the abandoned factory area of the petrochemical company, limited in the city. He said he wanted to talk about Zhao Chen's seduction of his wife, and Zhao Chen agreed who Zhuang paused for a moment, swallowed his saliva, and his voice continued to ring. On the morning of August 28, 2018, Zhu Guang, along with Wu Fan, Zhao Ji, and Lin Lu, drove a Wuling Hongguang to the abandoned factory area of Petrochemical Company, Limited to meet Zhao Chen. During the conversation between Zhu Guang and Zhao Chen, there was a dispute between the two sides. Excited, Zhu Guang used a controlled knife purchased on the same month 17th to stab Zhao Chen 22 times, resulting in his death. Zhu Guang planned and carried out all the criminal activities in this case, and was the main culprit. Although Wu Fan and others did not personally take action during Zhu Guang's killing of Zhao Chen, they played a helpful role and were accomplices. The above is the criminal process of this case. The above criminal facts are clear, the evidence is reliable, and sufficient to be determined. This court believes that the actions of the defendants Zhu Guang, Wu Fan, Zhao Ji, Lin Lu, and others have violated the provisions of Article 232 of the criminal law, and the circumstances are extremely serious. They should be punished severely according to law. According to Article 141 of the Criminal Procedure Law, we hereby initiate a public prosecution and request that your court impose a sentence in accordance with the law after speaking, Hu Zhuang, as the prosecutor, set aside the indictment in front of him. Report to the presiding judge, the indictment has been read out. After the prosecutor finished reading the indictment, presiding judge Li Hao asked the four defendants. The defendant can now state the facts of the crime charged in the indictment. The defendant first makes a statement to this court. The defendant is also known as the principal offender in the prosecution. I cannot agree with the fact that the prosecutor accused me of committing a crime. This is completely unfounded. I have not called Zhao Chen, nor have I been to the so-called abandoned factory area of Petrochemical Company, Limited on the 28th. Defendant 2, you can now present your opinion to this court. I deny the charges against me by the prosecutor, and I have not done these things. Listening to Wu Fan's words, the prosecutor Hu Zhuang frowned tightly. Did Wu Fan want to retract his confession? The remaining Zhao Ji and Lin Lu also denied the charges and criminal facts accused by the prosecutor, and had never done these things themselves. The opinions of the four defendants will be taken into consideration by this court in accordance with the law. Now, the defendants Wu Fan, Zhao Ji, and Lin Lu will be brought to court. If all four defendants are present in court, it is easy to form a suspicion of collusion, so the court usually has one trial per person. Judge Li Hao looked at Zhu Guang who was still standing and gestured that he no longer needed to stand. You can sit down now, Zhu Guang. The prosecutor can now interrogate the defendant regarding the allegations made in the indictment. The prosecutor, Hu Zhuang, nodded and immediately spoke with a pen in his right hand. Defendant Zhu Guang, the prosecutor is now asking you a few questions. Please answer truthfully. Zhu Guang nodded. Have you ever bought a controlled cutting tool about 20 centimeters long and 2 centimeters wide at Lao Wang department store? Yes, I bought a knife there. Okay, let me ask you again, where is this knife now? As the prosecutor inquired about the whereabouts of the knife, Jiang Sheng also looked up at Zhu Guang. I used this knife to chop bones and flesh, but it wasn't that effective. I threw it away later, so I don't know where it is now. The prosecutor Hu Zhuang listened to Zhu Guang's answer and continued to ask at his own pace. 
is the phone number 136 x times x times 9989 your phone number? Yes. On August 28, 2017, were you with me, Wu Fan, Zhao Zhi, and Lin Lu? Yes. What did all four of you do together that day? What did you do? Zhu Guang glanced at Jiang Sheng, pretending to be a memory. Chapter 6 Withdrawal of Confessions in Court, Part 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio I strolled around the city with them and then went home. Hu Zhuang frowned and reminded that he was clearly not satisfied with Zhu Guang's answer. Defendant Zhu Guang, I would like to remind you that the relevant words you said during the interrogation determine your attitude of confession and repentance, which is an important reference during the sentencing stage. Do you have anything else to change from the question the prosecutor just asked? Hu Xuang held a pen in his right hand and looked sharply at Zhu Guang. Feeling the gaze transmitted by the prosecutor, Zhu Guang couldn't help but lower his head. I, I have nothing to change. Seeing Zhu Guang's stubbornness, Hu Zhuang didn't say much anymore. As the prosecutor, he had already fulfilled his duty and immediately asked the last question. Do you know about the special relationship between your wife Wu Wei and Zhao Chen, Zhu Guang? In the end, when asked this question, Zhu Guang couldn't help but grip his yellow and orange pants in his right hand. The betrayal of the family is something that no normal person can tolerate. Due to rapid breathing, Zhu Guang's chest rapidly undulated and his voice spoke with a hint of pain, I know. Hu Zhuang nodded and ended his interrogation. Report to the presiding judge, our interrogation of Zhu Guang has been completed. As the presiding judge, Li Hao nodded and asked for the defense's opinion. The defense counsel can now question the defendant Zhu Guang regarding the criminal facts charged in the indictment. Jiang Sheng glanced at the lawyers of Wu Fan and the other three, and reached out to signal them to ask first. He finally came. Seeing Jiang Sheng like this, the other three were not polite either. The first to speak was Wu Fan's defense lawyer, who appeared to be an experienced veteran lawyer. Defendant Zhu Guang, on August 28, 2017, did you contact Wu Fan, Zhao Zhi, and Lin Lu by phone to gather together? or what was the reason. I contacted you. The old lawyer nodded, and as Wu Fan's defense counsel in this case, there was not much pressure on him. Just shift all the responsibility onto Zhu Guang. Everything was planned by him, and he also moved his hands. The rest of the people didn't participate in the whole process, they were just bystanders. In the face of punishment, a friend of the dead will not die of the poor. Among the four, only one of the defense lawyers, Jiang Sheng, bears a heavier burden. Okay, report to the presiding judge. Our inquiry is completed. The questions asked by the defense lawyers of Zhao Zhi and Lin Lu were also related to the reason why the four of them were together. After listening to the questions from the three defense lawyers sitting in the defense booth, Jiang Sheng, as the last one to ask. Zhu Guang, let me ask you why you contacted Wu Fan, Zhao Zhi, and Lin Lu on August 28, 2018 to be with you. The neighbors' voices behind me made me feel embarrassed, so I wanted to have a drink with them. Do you know Zhao Chen, the victim of this case? I don't know. Have you contacted him by phone on August 27, 2017? I don't even know him, how could I have his contact information? I can't find his contact information from that bitch Wu Chui, can I? Defendant Zhu Guang, please pay attention to your speech. Li Hao listened to Zhu Guang's vulgar language and began to remind him. At this point, Jiang Sheng had finished asking what he wanted to ask and ended his inquiry. After the interrogation and questioning of the defendant Zhu Guang ended, Judge Li Hao continued to follow the procedure. The law enforcement officers will take the defendant Zhu Guang to court and bring the defendant Wu Fan to court. Quickly, the person sitting in the defendant's seat changed from Zhu Guang to Wu Fan, the thinnest among the four. It was still the prosecutor Hu Zhuang who took the lead in interrogating the defendant. Defendant Wu Fan, on August 28, 2017, 
what did Defendant Zhu Guang say to you when he contacted you? Well, at that time he said he was in a bad mood, wanted to drink, and wanted us to accompany him. I only found out when I was drinking that his wife had an affair, where did you drink the wine? It's at a roadside stall, and I've forgotten the specific name. After drinking, what did you do next? After comforting Zhu Guang, we went straight home. Wu Wei spoke according to the script agreed upon with Zhu Guang and the other four before being arrested. The prosecutor Hu Zhuang flipped through the confession of Wu Fan to the police in his hand, which was only half of what Wu Fan had told the police. Report to the presiding judge, our interrogation is completed. Jiang Sheng and four other defense lawyers did not delay Wu Fan too much, some asked a question, and some even skipped without asking a question. Next is Zhao Chen, followed by Lin Lu. After the interrogation and questioning session of the four individuals, presiding judge Li Hao spoke up before moving on to the next session, please bring Zhu Guang, Wu Fan, Zhao Ji, and Lin Lu to court. After the four defendants sat down neatly, Judge Li Hao continued. The interrogation and inquiry process has come to an end, and now we move on to the evidence and cross-examination process. First, the prosecutor will provide evidence, and the prosecutor can now begin to provide evidence. Thank you, Judge. The first evidence we are presenting to the court now is a forensic appraisal report on the deceased Zhao Chen. In this case, the 22 knife wounds on the deceased Zhao Chen's body match the knives purchased by the defendant Zhu Guang at Mr. Wang's department store on August 17, 2017. After investigation by the public security organs, it was found that the controlled knives purchased by Zhu Guangqi, which were about 20 cm long and 2 cm wide, were only sold at Mr. Wang's department store throughout the city. In the past year, a total of seven knives have been sold and are still in normal use at home. Only the knives purchased by Zhu Guangqi are missing, and the time of Zhu Guangqi's purchase and Zhao Chen's murder is so close, in summary, Considering the conflict between Zhao Chen and Zhu Guang, we have sufficient reason to believe that Zhu Guang is the murderer of Zhao Chen. One evidence, one cross-examination, the prosecutor Hu Zhuang stopped after presenting the first piece of evidence. After listening to the first piece of evidence presented by the prosecutor Hu Zhuang, Jiang Xing lightly tapped the transcript twice and then began questioning. Report to the presiding judge, we have objections. The first evidence that the prosecution can prove is only that the wound on Zhao Chen's body was caused by the knife sold in Mr. Wang's department store, but it cannot prove that it was done by the defendant Zhu Guang. Although the time when Zhu Guang purchased the knife is very close to the time when Zhao Chen was killed, it cannot be ruled out that this is a coincidence, and it does not meet the requirement of excluding reasonable doubt in criminal law. Faced with Jiang Xing's cross-examination, the prosecutor Hu Zhuang did not sit idly by, but chose to summon a witness to testify in court. Report to the presiding judge, regarding the first evidence presented by our side, we apply for witness Wu Chui to appear in court and provide additional explanations. Judge Li Hao immediately approved it. Please also ask the law enforcement to bring witness Wu Chui to testify in court. Jiang Xing took advantage of the free time when the law enforcement brought witness Wu Chui to court, picked up the water cup on the table and put it to his mouth, his brain racing. Thinking about the purpose of the prosecutor asking Wu Chui to testify in court. Judge Li Hao waited until Wu Chui sat down in the witness box and spoke. Witness Wu Chui briefly introduces your identity information and whether there is any relationship with the defendant in this case to the court. My name is Wu Chui. I am the wife of one of the defendants in this case, Zhu Guang. Chapter 7 Is it police negligence or torture to extract confessions? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. After listening to Wu Chui's basic identity information, Judge Li Hao reminded Wu Chui, who was a witness. Witness Wu Chui, this court now informs you of the relevant rights and obligations of witnesses' appearance in court. You should testify truthfully and not falsify evidence. Did you hear clearly? Listen clearly. Upon hearing Wu Chui's answer, Judge Li Hao crossed his arms and placed his upper body on the table, 
commanding the nearby law enforcement officers. Legal officer, give Wu Chui the notice of rights and obligations for signature and fingerprint. Wu Chui took the document handed over by the law enforcement officer, signed her name and pressed her fingerprint. After the law enforcement returned the signed document to the clerk and stood aside, Judge Li Hao gave a glance to the prosecutor Hu Zhuang to start. Wu Chui, I'm asking you, have you ever seen this knife at home? Speaking, the prosecutor Hu Zhuang picked up a knife from in front of him and showed it to the court for observation. The forensic police immediately brought the knives displayed by the prosecutor Hu Zhuang to Wu Chui for identification. Yes, it was brought back by Zhu Guang one day. After Wu Chui identified and confirmed that it was this type of knife, Judge Li Hao asked the law enforcement officers to bring the knife to the defendant Zhu Guang for identification. Does the defendant have any objection to the knives displayed by the prosecutor? No. What about the defense counsel? Jiang Sheng and others looked at the knives displayed by the prosecutor Hu Zhuang one by one and shook their heads, expressing no objection. After the three members of the collegiate bench sitting in the trial seat confirmed again, presiding judge Li Hao spoke up and said. The prosecutor can continue to inquire. After Hu Zhuang placed the knives returned by the police on the table, he continued to ask Wu Chui. Has Zhu Guang used this knife specifically after buying it? No. Listening to Wu Chui's affirmative answer, the prosecutor Hu Zhuang continued to ask. Why are you so certain? I usually cook at home, and once I used the knife he bought to chop a bone. He scolded me and even took the knife from the kitchen to hide. Have you ever seen this knife again after this? Wu Chui shook her head. No. Report to the presiding judge, we have no further questions regarding witness Wu Chui's side. Based on the previous questioning, it can be seen that the defendant Zhu Guang, after buying the knife back from Master Wang's department store, did not intend to use it for daily household purposes. Instead, after his wife used it once, he abnormally hid the knife, which was an unusual behavior. Based on the viewpoints presented in our first evidence, we kindly request the collegiate bench to refer to them the prosecutor Hu Zhuang said so much to prove that the purpose of Zhu Guang's purchase of knives was impure, and Hu Zhuang had no choice. The murder weapon that killed Zhao Chen in this case has not been found. Does the defense counsel have any questions about questioning witness Wu Chui? Report to the presiding judge, we also have a few questions that we would like to ask the witness. Permission to ask questions, and no suggestive language shall be used during the questioning process. As the presiding judge, Li Hao reminded Jiang Sheng, who glanced at the notes he had just taken and immediately spoke. Witness Wu Chui, Zhu Guang bought the knife in August 2017, and now it is 2023. It has been almost six years since Zhu Guang brought the knife back home and based on your statement just now, it seems that you have only seen and used this knife a few times before it was hidden by Zhu Guang. Why are you so certain that the knife presented by the prosecutor just now is the one Zhu Guang bought back yes, Wu Chui has only seen that knife a few times and has only used it once. Can she really remember it so clearly? The human brain is not a computer. Listening to Jiang Xing's question, everyone in the court undoubtedly agreed in their hearts. That makes sense, I asked. Do you just remember when you say you remember? Because the knife was very easy to use, I took some photos with my mobile phone after using it, and planned to recommend it to sisters. So when prosecutor who came to me to testify in court, I compared myself with the photos at the time and only dared to say so after confirming their accuracy Jiang Xing smiled helplessly, there was nothing he could do. Report to the presiding judge, we have no further questions to ask the witness. As soon as Jiang Xing finished speaking, the prosecutor Hu Zhuang immediately spoke up and added another piece of evidence to strengthen the evidential validity of Wu Chui's testimony. This is a photo of the knife in the witness Wu Chui's phone photo album during our investigation and evidence collection. After reviewing the evidence presented by the prosecutor, Li Hao and two judges asked the defendant and defense counsel for their opinions on the evidence. Does the defendant have any objection to the evidence photos presented by the prosecutor? 
There is no objection. What about the defense counsel? There is no objection. Seeing that both sides had no objections, Judge Li Hao immediately instructed the prosecutor to continue. Okay, let the prosecutor continue to provide evidence. The second set of evidence we need to present now is the interrogation transcript of one of the defendants in this case, Wu Fan. When Wu Fan was arrested and subjected to a second interrogation by the police, the defendant Wu Fan gave a detailed account of the four individuals' criminal activities. Please also pay attention to the third paragraph on page 7 of the interrogation transcript. Jiang Sheng and others quickly flipped the file to the corresponding page and looked at the paragraph that the other party wanted the collegiate bench to pay close attention to. Faced with police questioning, Wu Fan explained that on the morning of the 28th, after they finished drinking, Zhu Guang spoke up and said that he had called Zhao Chen to arrange a meeting with him at the waste factory of Petrochemical Company, Limited. He had also bought a knife and wanted to teach Xiao Chen a lesson. He hoped that the three of us could join him. The three of us immediately agreed and, thinking of nothing major, got into Zhu Guang's van and arrived at the agreed meeting place between Zhu Guang and Zhao Chen. After Zhao Chen arrived, he suggested having a private conversation with Zhu Guang, while the three of us waited outside. Then we heard a scream and didn't take it seriously until Zhu Guang walked out covered in blood. The three of us realized that something must have happened. Zhu Guang said that Zhao Chen had died, and asked us to help him solve Zhao Chen's body. The four of us threw Zhao Chen's body into a nearby well, and then took Zhao Chen's van back to the city area Hu Zhuang repeated the oral supply of Wu Fan mentioned above. According to the defendant Wu Fan's criminal confession, its time and location are mutually corroborating with the police investigation, and the possibility of fabrication is extremely low, with high credibility. The prosecutor Hu Zhuang had just finished speaking before the presiding judge Li Hao could speak. Wu Wei, who was sitting in the defendant's seat, couldn't sit still and immediately spoke loudly. Judge, I have something to say. This is all that the police have asked me to confess through torture. If I don't say it, they will hit me, fight me hard. Upon hearing Wu Fan's words, the prosecutor Hu Zhuang involuntarily rubbed his eyebrows, realizing that the situation he was worried about had occurred. It involves torture to extract a confession, and it is also the most crucial testimony in this case. As the presiding judge, Li Hao's already serious expression became even more serious. Hu Zhuang put down his right hand, which was rubbing his brow, and immediately proved it. We request the presentation of relevant videos to prove the legality and compliance of the defendant Wu Fan's interrogation. Permission to present. On the big screen of the court, everyone watched a video of the prosecutor's interrogation of the defendant Wu Fan, which was legal and compliant throughout the entire process. Jiang Sheng, who was spinning a ballpoint pen in his right hand, immediately raised an objection. Please also remind the court that the defendant Wu Fan's statement of forced confession by torture was made during the public security organs, not during the prosecution's trial. We kindly request the prosecutor to provide a new proof. If it cannot be proven that the public security organs complied with the law and regulations during the interrogation process, the defendant Wu Fan's criminal confession should be excluded in accordance with the law judge Li Hao and the two judges around him discussed for a moment before speaking. Considering that the defendant Wu Fan in this case accused the public security organs of being involved in torture to extract confessions, and his testimony is one of the key pieces of evidence in this case, the court has decided to adjourn for three hours for the procuratorial organs to complete the retrieval of relevant audio and video materials. The court will be held on time at 2 p.m. today. The court is adjourned now. As Judge Li Hao's words fell, the sound of the hammer hitting the base began. Dong, after announcing an adjournment, presiding Judge Li Hao instructed the law enforcement officers to take the defendant down. Please bring the four defendants in this case back to the detention center now. At two o'clock in the afternoon, in court. The case of intentional homicide by Zhu Guang, Wu Fan, Zhao Ji, and Lin Lu is now in court. Judge Li Hao struck the hammer and declared that the trial, which had been interrupted for three hours, would continue. 
the prosecutor can now provide evidence for the defendant Wu Fan's accusation that the police are suspected of extorting confessions through torture in this case. The prosecutor Hu Zhuang did not directly present the audio and video recordings of Wu Fan's interrogation, but requested the court to summon relevant personnel to appear in court. We request that police officers Lu Han and Liming, who are responsible for interrogating the defendant Wu Fan, appear in court. Witness Lu Han appears in court. Police officer Lu Han briefly introduced his identity and waited for the prosecutor Hu Zhuang to ask questions after signing and fingerprint the relevant rights and obligations notice. Hu Zhuang immediately asked officer Lu Han to provide a detailed description of the interrogation scene at that time, and the same was true for the later witness, Don, who appeared in court as a witness. During the morning evidence collection process, Hu Zhuang was surprised to find that the police had miraculously not recorded the entire process of questioning Wu Fan, forcing him to have no choice. As a defense lawyer, Jiang Sheng also keenly sensed this issue and took advantage of your illness to kill you, making a decisive move. After the prosecutor Hu Zhuang finished speaking, Jiang Sheng argued that the other party's evidence was invalid. According to Article 123 of China's Criminal Procedure Law, when interrogating individuals who may be sentenced to life imprisonment or death, it is necessary to record and record the entire process, and the prosecutor is also requested to present relevant audio and video recordings. Due to the police negligence in handling the case, there was no complete audio or video recording during the interrogation of the defendant Wu Fan. Hu Zhuang had no choice but to admit this fact. What an oversight! Since the prosecutor is unable to provide relevant audio and video materials for the trial of the defendant Wu Fan, it should have been recorded instead of recorded, which has already involved procedural violations. Therefore, the collegial panel is requested to exclude the illegal testimony obtained by the Xiangqing District Police from illegally interrogating the defendant Wu Fan in accordance with the provisions of the Supreme People's Court, Ministry of Public Security, Ministry of National Security, and Ministry of Justice on strictly excluding illegal evidence in handling criminal cases. Dot. For the sake of procedural justice and judicial fairness, please exclude it by the collegiate bench in accordance with the law. Illegal confession, ruled out by law, was forcefully spoken by Jiang Sheng. Chapter 8 Indirect Evidence, No Proof of Crime. Above. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. After listening to Jiang Xing's speech, the prosecutor Hu Zhuang's expression was severe. He was stunned for a few seconds and organized some language in his brain to express some opinions to the collegiate bench. We also request the collegiate bench to note that it has been more than five years since the first trial by the public security organs until today's trial of the defendant Wu Fan's criminal confession. In the past five years, neither our court nor the public security organs have received any relevant charges against Wu Fan regarding the situation of torture and forced confession. Wu Fan's provocation in court cannot be ruled out as a consideration of litigation strategy the prosecutor Hu Zhuang said this and flipped through the materials in his hand. When he was interrogating Wu Fan, he repeatedly asked the defendant Wu Fan whether the criminal facts he told the public security organs were true. And during the trial of the defendant Wu Fan in our court, it was very clear whether the defendant Wu Fan's criminal confession made during his interrogation with the public security organs was true. The defendant Wu Fan clearly answered that he was true and also signed and stamped on the relevant transcripts. The defendant Wu Fan's criminal confession is crucial evidence in this case. We kindly request the collegial panel to consider it at its discretion based on the relevant circumstances. Jiang Sheng also insisted on his own viewpoint in the end that illegally collected evidence must be excluded. Um, I don't agree with the prosecutor's viewpoint on this point. Regardless of whether this evidence is crucial or not, since it violates the procedure, it should be excluded in accordance with the relevant provisions of the criminal procedure law. Judge Li Hao pondered for a moment and ended the argument between the two sides regarding the defendant Wu Fan's confession. Regarding the defendant Wu Fan's testimony, this collegial panel will fully consider both parties' opinions and, in accordance with relevant laws, the prosecutor will continue to provide evidence. 
The first evidence presented to the court by me now is the surveillance footage of the defendant Zhu Guang's van driving around the abandoned factory area of Petrochemical Company, Limited. In the video provided by the police, we can clearly see that the defendant Zhu Guang's van drove into the abandoned factory area of Petrochemical Company, Limited at 2 p.m. One hour later, Zhu Guang's van drove out of the abandoned factory area of Petrochemical Company, Limited. After the prosecutor finished speaking, Hu Zhuang gave the relevant video to the law enforcement for them to display in court. Does the defendant have any objection to the evidence presented by the prosecutor? No. Zhu Guang and four others intuitively answered the chief judge's inquiry. What about the defense counsel? Do you have any objections? Jiang Sheng and others also spoke directly without objection. The prosecutor continues to provide evidence. The second evidence is four relevant certificates issued by the mobile company. A proof that the phone number 136 x 9989 is registered and used by the defendant Zhu Guang. A certificate stating that the phone number 137 x 1345 was registered and used by the deceased Zhao Qin in this case. A certificate stating that 136 x 9989 made a phone call to phone number 137 x 1345 on August 27, 2017. The last one is about the activity diagram of the signal base station with phone number 136 x 9989. It can be clearly seen in the picture that Zhu Guang, as the owner of the mobile phone number, has been active in the East Factory building of the abandoned factory area, which is the place where the crime occurred the four defendants and defense lawyers such as Jiang Sheng still have no objections. Any evidence is questioned, it's not cross-examination, it's just nonsense. The final evidence we presented is the relevant pictures of the abandoned factory area of Petrochemical Company, Limited which is the site of this case, as well as the DNA report of the blood stains on the ground, which means it is the site of this case. After presenting the last piece of evidence in his hand, Hu Zhuang also finished presenting the evidence. Report to the presiding judge, all our evidence has been presented. Judge Li Hao nodded and looked towards the defense bench, questioning the four people. Does the defense counsel have any new evidence to present? I don't have any new evidence to present. No. There is no new evidence to be presented. Don't show it. Jiang Sheng and the four others answered the chief judge's inquiry one after another. There is no new evidence to be presented, and the process of presenting evidence and cross-examination has come to an end. We are preparing to enter the most exciting part of the trial. The courtroom debate. The process of providing evidence and cross-examination has come to an end. Now we are entering the court debate, which mainly focuses on two aspects. Facts and Sentencing Judge Li Hao briefly introduced the main direction of the court debate, allowing the defense counsel to begin. Firstly, debate the facts of the crime, and the defense counsel can begin. This time, Jiang Xing spoke first. Based on the evidence provided by the prosecutor just now, we have noticed that the date of death of the victim Zhao Qin in this case cannot be determined. Whether it was on the 28th or 29th, the relevant judicial death report did not provide a clear result. Since the cause of death cannot be determined, how can we determine whether it was done by Zhu Guang and others on the 28th? The second issue is about the cause of death of the victim Zhao Qin in this case. In the judicial appraisal report, there is a paragraph stating that due to the deceased's prolonged immersion in water, the body deformed. It is difficult to determine whether the victim died from drowning or shock-induced death due to excessive blood loss caused by trauma. In summary, it is difficult to determine the date of death and the cause of death of the victim Zhao Qin in this case. It would be unfair to arbitrarily attribute the cause of the deceased to the four defendants in this case at the time of the incident, it was in September, and Zhu Guang and others threw Zhao Chen's body into a well. The temperature inside the well was much lower than outside, and the body was discovered later. 
Therefore, the date of death could only be determined within a rough range and could not be accurately determined. Moreover, although the prosecution presented relevant evidence to prove that the four defendants in this case appeared in the abandoned factory area of Petrochemical Company, limited at the time when the victims may have been killed, it cannot prove that the incident occurred on the 28th day. Please note that our statement is complete. The prosecutor Hu Zhuang listened to Jiang Xing's point of view, supported his forehead with his right hand, and immediately explained. Regarding the questioning raised by the defense counsel, firstly, the time of death of the victim in this case. Although the exact time of death was not provided in the forensic appraisal report, the victim left the supermarket he operated on the afternoon of August 28, 2017 and has not returned. Before leaving, he also sent a WeChat message to his wife, saying that he went out to do something and will be back soon. And in the audio.visual materials we previously presented, the victim Zhao Chen also appeared around the abandoned factory area of Petrochemical Company, limited on the afternoon of the 28th. We have every reason to assume that Zhao Chen's death occurred on the 28th. We have already stated whether it was the actions of the four defendants in this case, and we will not repeat it here Judge Li Haoxian was also fully focused on listening to the opinions of both sides, occasionally bowing his head to take notes. After listening to the prosecutor Hu Zhuang's answer, Jiang Sheng looked at the file in his hand and continued speaking. Chapter 9 Indirect Evidence, Failure to Prove Crime, Part 2 You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Another point is the signal detection data of the mobile phone base station presented by the prosecutor, which proves that the defendant Zhu Guang and others in this case got off the car and entered the abandoned factory area of Petrochemical Company, Limited. We have objections to this, and this evidence can only prove that the person carrying the phone number 136 x times x times 9989 appeared in their factory area. Is the phone carrier necessarily the defendant in this case, Zhu Guang? The prosecutor was unable to directly prove the relevant views of the four prosecutors Jiang Xing said and gave an example of a case. And when we were collecting relevant information, we found that in a fraud case, there were fraudsters who used existing technology to display relevant numbers on the other party's phone. Therefore, we cannot rule out the possibility that the phone call to the victim Zhao Chen on August 27, 2017 was made by someone else. Our statement is complete. Jiang Xing glanced at the trial seat and finished his statement. After listening to Jiang Xing's supplementary opinions, presiding judge Li Hao asked the prosecutor's opinion as usual. Do the prosecutor have any further opinions to supplement? We have nothing else to add. After the adjournment, the defense counsel will provide the clerk with a copy of the proxy statement. The debate on the facts of the crime has come to an end, and we will now focus on the sentencing section. The defense counsel will come first. Okay, Jiang Xing nodded, it seemed that the current situation was pretty good. Most judges who ask for your proxy are based on your opinion, which is worth considering by the judge. If the judge asks you, defender, which university did you graduate from, please note that they are not really asking, but reminding you that your statement just now was simply not pleasing to the eye. There is no previous tension between the two sides regarding sentencing, and this case does not involve situations such as self-surrender. There is no point of dispute between the two sides. The prosecutor Hu Zhuang basically repeated the content of the sentencing proposal. Jiang Sheng only briefly stated in the end that the existing evidence cannot prove that Zhu Guang and his four companions were guilty of intentional homicide and should be released without charge in accordance with the law. The court debate session has come to an end, and now we are entering the final statement session. The prosecutor can start now. With the permission of the presiding judge, the prosecutor Hu Zhuang looked at the draft that had been written in advance and made temporary modifications to the trial situation during the trial, and spoke. Dear Chief Judge and Judge. According to the relevant provisions of the Criminal Procedure Law, I am appointed by the People's Procuratorate of Xiangqing District to represent this court, represent this court, attend court as a national prosecutor to support prosecution, and exercise legal supervision over criminal proceedings in accordance with the law. 
We hereby express the following opinions on the evidence and circumstances of this case, and request the attention of the court. In the court investigation just now, we interrogated four defendants and presented relevant evidence. The above opinions are for the reference of the collegiate bench Jiang Sheng followed closely and also issued his final defense opinion. Jiang Sheng looked at the statement in front of him, glanced at it, and then looked up and said, What? Dear Chief Judge, Judge. Yajing Law Firm, commissioned by the parents of the defendant Zhu Guang, has appointed me as the defense counsel for the defendant Zhu Guang. Through the court investigation just now, I have strengthened my defense opinion that the defendant Zhu Guang is not guilty. Firstly, there is the issue of evidence. The murder weapon in this case was not found by the public security organs. The specific date of death of the victim in this case has not been determined. All that can be determined in this case is that on August 28, 2017, an unfortunate person named Xiao Chen was killed, and at the same time, the defendant Zhu Guang and four others appeared at the location of his murder. All other procuratorial organs have not been able to prove it, or the evidence presented cannot reach the level of excluding reasonable doubts. When the prosecutor presented evidence, all the evidence presented was indirect evidence and there was no direct evidence to prove that the case was committed by the defendant Zhu Guang and four others. The most important direct evidence among them is the testimony of the defendant Wu Fan in this case. Oral testimony itself is full of subjectivity, and its evidential effect is far inferior to physical evidence. It is precisely based on this that the criminal procedure law has also made relevant provisions. If only a confession is made, it cannot be convicted, after all, a person cannot prove their guilt on their own. And the public security organs are also suspected of violating procedural laws during the process of collecting confessions, which is also the interrogation of the defendant Wu Fan, and should be ruled out in accordance with the law. Finally, we would like to say that the indirect evidence in this case does not prove its guilt. The above viewpoints should also be referred to by the collegiate bench during the evaluation stage after listening to the statements of Jiang Sheng and four others, as well as the four defendants, Judge Li Hao spoke up. The final statement section ends here. The collegial panel will fully consider the opinions expressed by the prosecutor, defendant, and defense counsel, and this court will take them into consideration during the evaluation stage. The court is adjourned now. As soon as Li Hao finished speaking, the hammer he picked up with his right hand also struck the base. The three people sitting in the judgment seat got up and walked towards the conference room holding the files. Jiang Sheng and others sat quietly in the courtroom waiting. During the time of the collegiate bench, Jiang Xing quietly sorted out the materials on the table. I have already done everything I need to do, but I can only trust the law and the outcome. In the courtroom, Li Hao, the presiding judge of the Zhu Guang case, looked at his two colleagues and announced the start of the evaluation, now enter the evaluation. Everyone share their own opinions. The judge sitting on Li Hao's left side looked at the trial notes he had made and expressed his opinion. Firstly, the most crucial evidence in this case is whether Wu Fan's confession was obtained through torture, which also involves the question of whether this crucial evidence should be excluded in accordance with the law. Due to the possibility of life imprisonment or death penalty involved in this case, the entire process should be recorded and recorded in accordance with the law. But the prosecutor was unable to provide the relevant audio and video recordings. Although the prosecutor explained during the trial that if it involved torture to extract a confession, why did the defendant Wu Fan not mention it in the past five years? This involves two aspects. Firstly, the question of whether a right is considered abandoned if the actor does not use it themselves. Secondly, the role that our court should play in it Judge Li Hao and another judge listened to the above speech, pondering and occasionally taking notes. I'll add a little more, Li Hao said after he finished speaking. This also involves procedural justice. In this case, I think we all believe that Zhu Guang is undoubtedly the murderer, right? Upon hearing Judge Li Hao's words, the two of them smiled and nodded. From the evidence currently available, it seems that none of them are pointing towards Zhu Guang and the other four people. 
there are not so many coincidences in this world. But, Li Hao's tone changed, and his face immediately became serious. What the judiciary requires us to sentence a person to be guilty is that the evidence must be sufficiently sufficient. Without this, we cannot declare others guilty. Maintaining judicial fairness is our responsibility as judges, and we must not rely on subjective ideas to determine the case. Listening to Judge Li Hao's words, the two judges nodded solemnly. Regarding the defendant Wu Fan's confession, I believe it should be excluded in accordance with the law. What is everyone's opinion? I agree. I have no objection. In the conference room, the three members of the collegiate bench are deliberating one by one on the dispute points between the two parties during the court investigation stage. Chapter 10 Insufficient Evidence, No Suspicions of Crime You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. One hour, two hours. Judge Lee Hao picked up two dot thirds of the volume of strong tea from the table and drank it all in one gulp. Since everyone's opinions are consistent, let's sign it. Judge Lee Hao was the first to sign his name on the copy of the file, and the other two judges followed suit and also wrote their names. Jia, the noise made by the friction of the hinges when the conference room door was opened made everyone's expression solemn. The trial is now continuing. After presiding Judge Li Hao sat down at the trial seat, he spoke and at the same time, the hammer he picked up with his right hand also struck the base. After deliberation by the Economic and Social Council, this court has determined the following. 1. The question of whether the criminal confession of the defendant Wu Fan presented by the prosecutor in this case should be excluded in accordance with the law. This court believes that according to Article 123 of the Criminal Procedure Law, for cases that may be sentenced to life imprisonment, death penalty, or other major criminal cases, the interrogation process should be recorded or recorded. Recording or recording should be conducted throughout the entire process to maintain integrity. This case complies with its relevant regulations and should be recorded and recorded throughout the entire process in accordance with the law. Although the prosecutor presented audio and video materials related to the trial of the defendant Wu Fan in this case, they can only prove that the relevant procedures were followed when the prosecutor tried the defendant Wu Fan in this case, and cannot prove anything else. The prosecutor argued that if the interrogation of Wu Fan involved torture to extract a confession, the defendant in this case, Wu Fan, should not have made the relevant charges only during the trial. This court believes that the timing of when the defendant Wu Fan filed for torture to extract a confession is not the focus of this case, but rather the question of whether the prosecutor can provide evidence and whether they should bear the burden of proof in the face of the defendant Wu Fan's relevant accusations. In this case, according to Article 123 of the Criminal Procedure Law, the investigating authority shall record and record the entire interrogation of the four defendants in this case. Specifically, in this case, the investigating authority should record and record the entire process in accordance with the law, which not only means that the relevant departments comply with the law, but also means the protection of the suspect's human rights. If it is necessary to record audio or video without recording it, it may seriously affect judicial fairness, and the prosecutor has not reasonably explained it. According to Article 54 of the Criminal Procedure Law, exclusion shall be granted in accordance with the law, and the relevant defense opinions of the defense counsel shall be adopted by this court judge Li Hao looked up at the three parties under the trial seat and continued reciting. 2. Regarding the timing and other circumstances of the victim's death in this case. The defense argues that this court believes that. After reading the reasoning section, Judge Li Hao flipped over a page and looked at the short paragraph on the last side, his voice becoming louder, finally, this court's oral judgment is as follows. Please stand up, everyone. The clerk sitting in front of the trial seat quickly spoke loudly as he also stood up. After standing up, Jiang Sheng placed his hands on the table and listened to the final verdict. In summary, the evidence based on which this case was determined cannot be mutually corroborated, does not form a complete chain, and does not meet the legal proof standards of authenticity and sufficiency. 
The fact that Zhu Guan, Wu Fan, Zhao Zhi, and Lin Lu were found guilty of intentional homicide is unclear, and the evidence is insufficient. Therefore, it cannot be determined that Zhu Guan, Wu Fan, Zhao Zhi, and Lin Lu are guilty. According to Article 200, 3, Article 236, 1, 3, and Article 241, 1, 4, of the Interpretation of the Supreme People's Court on the Application of the Criminal Procedure Law of the People's Republic of China, the judgment is as follows. The defendants were acquitted. Zhu Guang, Wu Fan, Zhao Zhi, and Lin Lu. Not guilty. Jiang Xing breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. Although he may have had an advantage in the trial, everything was unknown until the verdict was pronounced. The trial of this case has been concluded and is now closed. Judge Li Hao heard the sound of the last hammer hitting the base during the trial, and the other two judges packed their materials and left. Jiang Xing first went to the clerk's place to submit the copy of the proxy words and other related materials, and then returned to his position to start packing up the materials. The conclusion of the first instance judgment means that the commission has ended, and whether the procuratorial organs will apply for a protest next has nothing to do with Jiang Sheng. Lawyer Jiang, thank you really. Without you, I don't know how much hardship my family Zhu Guang would have to endure. Lawyer Jiang, it's fortunate to have you. Faced with the gratitude of Zhu Guang's parents, Jiang Xing repeatedly stated that this was his own job and declined several times before leaving the court. Of course, afterwards, the prosecutor's office hesitated repeatedly and did not choose to protest in this case. Instead, they sent Zhu Guang in for theft, and the other three people received a considerable amount of state compensation, after all, they were detained for five years in vain. Jiang Xing strode out of the court carrying his briefcase, and just as he sat in the car, the sound of the system began to ring. Ding, host successfully completed mission. Zhu Guang's Innocence Defense, Regular Reward 200 Experience Points, Task Special Reward Group Follow, Group Attention What kind of thing? Listening to the special reward name given by the system, Jiang Xing carefully watched the introduction of this special reward. Group Introduction A disposable item that can be used to designate a specific group to understand the host's intended meaning through any means. Jiang Xing's slender fingers rhythmically tapped on the steering wheel. Da 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 Jiang Sheng, who hadn't figured out how to use this prop for a while, turned to the system for help. System, what is the specific purpose of this prop? Extracting explanations. Let's give the host a simple answer with this system. This prop was given to you in advance to show that the host is about to refresh the weekly weekly tasks irregularly, in order to cope with the upcoming tasks in Jiang Sheng, holding his chin, listened attentively to the system's interpretation. Is this the question I'm asking? System, do you know Chinese? Of course, so why didn't I understand? Dot. Forget it, then let's wait until the next task is refreshed before we talk. Jiang Sheng turned the steering wheel. Go home, take a hot bath, and end today's day comfortably. There are still many cases waiting for me.